So, hello my friends. Today we'll be presenting on the topic evaluation of resource allocation algorithms in cloud computing. And the teammates are Abhinav Chandana, Krishna Ganeriwal, Karthik Agarwal. So, basically what is cloud computing? It is the practice of using a network of remote servers hosted on the internet to store, manage and process data rather than on a local server or a personal computer. SAAS, PAS, IAS are some of the services provided by the cloud computing. Uh, there are many types of clouds available, uh, majorly public, private and a combination of both known as hybrid. Uh, on the back end of cloud computing are virtual machines which uses resource allocation algorithms. Enabling technologies for cloud computing. Virtualization. It refers to the act of creating a virtual version of something including virtual hardware, operating system, storage devices or network resources. Web services. It is a service offered by an electronic device to another electronic device. Distributive computing. Same as the cloud computing. Virtual machines. As, as told already, they are the data centers that process any given request. Allocation algorithms. These include the algorithms by which resource allocation is conducted. Moving on to the importance of cloud computing. Cloud computing offers a lot of features. These include number one, flexibility. Secondly, disaster recovery. Third, auto automatic software updates. Capital expenditure is becomes free. Increased collaboration. Work from anywhere feature. Document control security, competitiveness, and environment-friendly uh, features. The What motivates us to work on this project? Green computing implemented in this domain would reduce power consumption, which is a big problem in industries today. Increasing energy efficiency is what is the primary motive for this uh, project. Increasing the profits of the company is an additional benefit. Reducing carbon emission and reducing the cost for working will benefit the, both the environment and the industry. As a paper is on power efficiency, so related papers which are also on power efficiency, the number of policy decisions in terms of virtual cluster have been investigated and compared to reduce running cost. To examine the cloud computing technology, an in-depth a review of cloud computing and its benefits have been done and the results have, been de have demonstrated that cloud technology facilitates the communication of data regardless of time and place. A measure of greenness defined at different system layers to identify the reasons for power wastage. Further, an infrastructure is also required for accessing these set of metrics. So moving on to the theme of the project. As we know that 40% of the total power consumed is by data centers. So we need to evaluate power efficiency algorithms for efficiency and carbon emissions in cloud data centers to save our planet and reduce the carbon emissions uh, uh, by data centers. Now design. So in our design, the consumers make requests and that request is forwarded to the data centers. And that data center is provide uh, to providers and providers say accept and they process the request and provide the consumers with the required details. And uh, each request creates a virtual. So moving on to the first scheduling algorithm, that is RASA. This is a task scheduling al algorithm that was proposed of three phases. First, the initialization phase, in which the expected response time will be will be found for each virtual machine. Then, efficient virtual machine will be found according to the response time in the second phase. In the final phase, the identification ID of the efficient virtual machine will be returned. This algorithm uses the basic min-min and max-min algorithms. Both of these algorithms are used as a combination. Applying these two methods are based on the number of virtual machines in the data center. Min-min algorithm will be applied if the number of virtual machines are odd, otherwise max-min will be followed. The structure of this algorithm can be seen through this example. Assuming there are five virtual machines available in a data center, then min-min will be applied for the first phase, then max-min will be used for the next round. These two methods will be applied alternatively till the last task is assigned. Therefore, the task will, with long competition time will not be missed because of tasks with small completion time and vice versa. So this algorithm basically focuses on minimizing the execution time of each task by apply, 
both active monitoring algorithm and resource aware scheduling algorithms. Advantages it is easy to implement, not time consuming. Disadvantages power consuming and 100% CPU utilization. Thank you. The second resource allocation algorithm is TPPC. TPPC stands for two phases power convergence algorithm. TPPC is specifically aimed at cutting down the pa power consumption and the carbon emission in cloud data centers. TPPC is an optimized version of round robin algorithm already studied in subjects like operating systems. It was proposed to balance the virtual machines that run on the servers and to cut down the power consumed by these servers. TPPC is basically scaled down into two phases. One is the scale down phase and the other is the scale up phase. In the scale down phase, if the average workload that is the number of requests made by the clients is more, less than the scale down threshold value set, then the virtual machine will be migrating out from the current server to another server and then the particular server which was initially allocated to the virtual machine will be shut down, hence decreasing the power consumption by that virtual machine and bringing down the carbon emission. The other phase is the scale up phase. If the average workload is more than the scale up threshold value set, which means the number of requests is greater than the resources allocated to that server, then the virtual machine will be migrated from the heavily loaded server to a server that has been recently booted and hence dividing the workload and reducing the power consumption. Now coming on to the advantages and disadvantages of this algorithm. The advantages include the power consumption of a cloud data center can be greatly scaled down by using TPPC algorithm since the quality of service also increases. This algorithm is very beneficial to bring down the power consumption. It is better than RASA in terms of power consumption too. Now the disadvantages of TPPC. The CPU workload just considered in this algorithm is just considered in this algorithm. Specification of virtual machines on cloud data center would be different in different in the real cloud environment. Hence, there will be configuration issues when, while switching the servers for these virtual machines. In such a situation, the number of virtual CPU cannot be fully controlled, and hence is a. Galloway proposed power aware load balancing algorithm PALB for small to medium local clouds, by which the number of active computing nodes would be determined based on utilization percentage. Moreover, this algorithm can maintain the state of all computing nodes. PALB algorithm can be applied to balance the load amongst VMs according to the amount of power consumed by servers. This algorithm can be categorized as a power management algorithm and will consider different conditions for servers are less than specific threshold. Otherwise, when all servers workload achieved threshold is no more, VM will start. The result of applying PALB has also been compared with round robin algorithm. The results have proven that both adequate availability to compute nodes resources and decreased power consumption can be achieved by PALB in comparison to non-power aware algorithm like round robin. This is a powerful efficient algorithm based on VM load balancing technique. In this algorithm, VM would be placed on an active PM which has the resource to host based on request size of VM. If active computing node has not enough resources to host, then a compute node would, that is powered off will be active to host the VM. Nevertheless, this algorithm is being tried to save power through switching off the computing node that is not in use. PALB includes three main sections, balancing section, upscaling section, and downscaling section. Initiation of a new VM on PM which has the lowest utilization number will be determined in balancing section. If all active PM utilizes more than 75%, additional PM will be switched on in upscaling section. While if the PM utilizer is less than 25%, PALB will shut down the PM by downscaling section. This uh, algorithm focuses on computing nodes to save costs while keeping availability high. The goal of this algorithm is to maintain availability to computing nodes while reducing the total power consumed by the cloud. This algorithm is intended to be used to, to implement small to medium sized local clouds. The advantages of using PALB is uh, this is a load balancer algorithm that maintains the utilization of all computing nodes and distributes VMs in a power efficient way. 
In this algorithm, VM migration is not applied. Through migration of small number of disks, it can be used without overloading them. Moreover, standby hosts consume big portion of power. As my teammates have pointed out three algorithms, that is RASA, TPPC and PALB. We'll be comparing these, uh, these algorithms on these three parameters, that is energy efficiency, cost efficiency and carbon dioxide emissions. Basically, these three parameters are very useful in green computing. On the basis of cost, as you all know, RASA uses all its CPU every time. That means 100% of CPU utilization. In TPPC, only 19.68 of the hosts are being utilized by all the virtual machines. In PLAB, only 11.19% of the hosts are being used. And the other hosts are on standby. So this basically helps us cutting down the power and hence cutting down the cost. So according to the comparison on the cost, PALB comes out to be the best. The next parameter to compare these three algorithms are power consumption. Among the three evaluated algorithms, RASA has never focused on the power consumed by the green data centers. It has been concentrating more on, the sch on scheduling the tasks based on the needed process time for the requests made. Nevertheless, task scheduling is an effective method to increase resource utilization but does not focus on the primary issue that is power consumption and carbon emission. Table 4 as mentioned later indicates the power consumption in the algorithms TPPC and PALB. What happens in TPPC is that always there is at least just one uh, server that is available but in PALB there are a lot of servers available some in the standby mode and some active. Power consumption, hence power consumption in PALB is a combination of power on energy consumption that is that uses 2.36 kilowatts per hour and standby mode which is the, which uses 200 kilowatts per hour. Clearly it can be understood that standby servers are also using a lot of energy. Hence PALB algorithm also includes uh, consuming a lot of power. If Based on only power consumption, we judge all the three algorithms. TPPC stands out from the rest of the two and is clearly a winner. As mentioned, the table 4 includes the power consumed by each algorithm. The algorithms are RASA, TPPC and PALB. RASA has not been measured because RASA does not evaluate power consumption. TPPC includes at least one server and does not have any standby servers whereas PALB has both underutilized hosts and standby hosts and hence uses a lot of power and is proved and hence we can prove that TPPC is clearly a winner in power consumption. Carbon footprint, carbon footprint refers to the amount of greenhouse gases including CO2 emitted from different sources. Growing demand of cloud computing and investing in building large data centers could increase in power consumption and CO2 emitted by cloud infrastructure. Environmental benefits can also be achieved by reduction of greenhouse gas emissions and local air pollution. Hence, power efficient techniques would indirectly minimize the CO2 emission. Equation below shows the relation between power consumption and CO2 emission. T is equal to E into Y, where T is the total amount of CO2 emission, E is the power consumed, and I is the greenhouse gas emission intensity of the power used. In this equation, E can be obtained easily and I is the CO2 emitted by each server. I is 12.62 metric ton per month for 100 servers in the data center. The greenhouse gas emission intensity E is the energy consumed by each algorithm and T is the total amount of CO2 emitted by each algorithm. This parameter can also be calculated for TPC, TPPC and PLB because no power consumption has been focused on and calculated by RASA. In TPPC, just one server has been utilized and other servers have uh, are shut down. Therefore, 2.61 kilowatt hours is just consumed by host number one. As a result, CO2 emission is just calculated by for the underutilized server. While in PALB, one or more servers are underutilized and other servers are standby and not shut down. Therefore, 202.36 kilowatt hour hours is consumed by all 100 servers in the data center. Accordingly, CO2 emission is calculated for 100 hosts. 
It can be concluded that amount of CO2 emission for RASA would be greatest value because all servers are operating and not shut down or standby. The host will be fully utilized, that is 100%, thus power consumption and CO2 emission would be, my, uh, be more than the other two algorithms. Calculation of power consumption and CO2 emission in RASA can be addressed in future work to conduct a more accurate uh, comparison among these uh, three algorithms. Therefore, TPPC is more efficient towards uh, reducing CO2 emission because a new servers are shut down in this algorithm, though implementation cost is made way more than PALB algorithms. In this research, three task scheduling algorithms, TPPC, RASA, and PELB, are analyzed by an effective and easy to use IAAS simulation toolkit, CloudSim, and compared them according to three main parameters such as power efficiency, cost effectiveness, and CO2 emission. Simulation results and the utilized equation and analysis is show that TPPC is the most efficient algorithm due to less amount of power consumption and low volume of CO2 emission. However, its implementation cost is way greater than PALB. Task scheduling algorithms can be deployed in TBPC instead of VM migration to reduce power consumption even more. Power consumption and subsequent CO2 emission would be minimized in PALB by switching off the unused servers. In this way, PALB would be the most efficient algorithm that can fulfill power efficiency, cost effectiveness, and environmental impact. Finally, a combination of these techniques used in these three algorithms would be useful to achieve a new algorithm which can satisfy the power efficiency, cost effectiveness, and a minimum CO2 emission. Data center expansion and huge increment in IT equipment's density cause considerable amount of power insufficiency. 30 to 50 percent of total power consumed by data centers is the cooling power consumption wasted by inefficient cooling systems. Therefore, to remove this bottleneck of power, in, uh, power efficiency, some cooling systems can be applied in different climate zones based on data center's locations. Gain benefits from fresh air, reuse the heat dissipated from data center equipment, and use sea water and number of cooling systems which can help service providers to save power and environmental efficiency. Climate zone and location of data center have discussed as two factors which directly affect the power consumption, power cost, and ultimately CO2 emission. As climate condition, location of data center, and power consumed by cooling systems were not calculated and considered in this research, therefore it would be better to consider these factor factors in future work to achieve power efficient and cost effective algorithm to save the environment. These are our references.